morning and welcome to the Oratory in Bishop's House, Wrexham, on this fifth Sunday of Lent, for the celebration of Mass in the extraordinary circumstances in which we find ourselves with the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic, the call to self-isolation and social distancing. You can see me, but I see no one. Social distancing could not be achieved here, and so I celebrate a private Mass, even without a minister. But that is being live-streamed, and to which you are able to attend. Because there is no one else with me here, the text of the Mass has a few small omissions. So please don't think I have missed out a part for any reason other than in the circumstances it would not be included. But I would hope you feel you are included. I hope it will be a prayerful and beneficial time for us all, in which we hear the scriptures proclaimed and the prayers of the Mass are offered in worship, thanksgiving and praise. Please know the Mass is being offered for all the faithful of the Church, living and dead, and for the needs of the world. We pray too for a time to come when we will physically be united again at the altar of the Lord for the sharing of the Word and of the broken bread that is the body of Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Give me justice, O God, and plead my cause against the nation that is faithless. For the deceitful and cunning rescue me. For you, O God, are my strength. In the prayer of the psalm, we will say these words. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Israel, indeed, he will redeem from all its iniquity. We acknowledge our need of the mercy of God and seek that fullness of redemption. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, you were lifted up to draw all people to yourself. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You shouldered the cross to bear our suffering and sinfulness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You open for your people the way from death into life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord says this. I am now going to open your graves. I mean to raise you from your graves, my people, and lead you back to the soil of Israel. And you will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, my people. And I shall put my spirit in you, and you will live, and I shall resettle you on my own soil, and you will know that I, the Lord, have said and done this. It is the Lord who speaks. 
rocks. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. O let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleading. If you, O Lord, should mark our guilt, Lord, who would survive? But with you is found forgiveness. For this we revere you. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. My soul is waiting for the Lord. I count on his word. My soul is longing for the Lord more than watchmen for daybreak. Let the watchmen count on daybreak and Israel on the Lord. Because with the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Israel indeed he will redeem from all its iniquity. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. People who are interested only in unspiritual things can never be pleasing to God. Your interests, however, are not in the unspiritual, but in the spiritual, since the Spirit of God has made his home in you. In fact, unless you possess the Spirit of Christ, you would not belong to him. Though your body may be dead, it is because of sin. But if Christ is in you, then your spirit is life itself, because you have been justified. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, then he who raised Jesus from the dead will give life to your own mortal bodies through his spirit living in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. The sisters, Martha and Mary, sent this message to Jesus. Lord, the man you love is ill. On receiving the message, Jesus said, This sickness will not end in death, but in God's glory, and through it, the Son of God will be glorified. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Yet when he learned that Lazarus was ill, he stayed where he was for two more days before saying to the disciples, let us go to Judea. On arriving, Jesus found that Lazarus had been in the tomb for four days already. When Martha heard that Jesus had come, she went to meet him. Mary remained sitting in the house. Martha said to Jesus, If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, whatever you ask of God, he will grant you. Your brother, said Jesus to her, will rise again. Martha said, I know he will rise again at the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. If anyone believes in me, even though he dies, he will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she said, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who was to come into this world. Jesus said in great distress, with a sigh that came straight from the heart, Where have you put him? They said, See how much he loved him. 
but there were some who remarked, He opened the eyes of the blind man. Could he not have prevented this man's death? Still sighing, Jesus reached the tomb. It was a cave with a stone to close the opening. Jesus said, Take the stone away. Martha said to him, Lord, by now he will smell. This is the fourth day. Jesus replied, Have I not told you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing my prayer. I knew indeed that you always hear me, but I speak for the sake of all these who stand around me, so that they may believe it was you who sent me. When he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, here, come out. The dead man came out, his feet and hands bound with bands of stuff and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, Unbind him, let him go free. Many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Those readings prompt just a couple of thoughts to me. And it begins with, are we servants of the Lord? Are we disciples of the Lord? Or are we friends of the Lord? Before his death, Jesus is to say to his companions, No longer do I call you servants. I have called you friends. To be a friend, one is prepared to give much, to have the confidence to ask for a great deal, and to be with the other through thick and thin, good times and not so good. Today, we are living in not good times. Because of the coronavirus, there are many who are anxious, some who are afraid, others who have or will become perilously lonely, others for whom a large part of their lives is to be out and about, at work or in the service of others, or just doing their going about their daily lives. And now all this is taken away from them and they become isolated. Some will suffer sickness and for some that sickness will bring them to death. It is in Jesus we have the true friend we desire. He gave much. The Son of God being born among us, he came that we might have the fullness of life. As we pray in the fourth Eucharistic prayer, for when the hour had come for him to be glorified, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And his prayer to the Father is that his disciples know the Father as he knows the Father, that they be holy in the truth of that reality, and that they have the joy that exists between the Father and Jesus, his beloved Son. Jesus also asks much. He looks for a faith that is born out of and lived in love. Time and time again in the Gospels, we hear of Jesus challenging those who seek his compassion, healing and new life. For in doing so, 
he draws out from them greater faith and real desire. It sometimes seems that God is testing our patience. But that can be the difference between belief and unbelief. Simply asking of a favour. Thirdly, Jesus is with us. At Christmas time we heard that his name was to be Emmanuel, as the angel tells Joseph, a name which means God with us. That is at the beginning of St Matthew's Gospel, which then closes with the words of Jesus to his disciples, and remember I am with you always to the close of the age as he sends them into the world to accomplish the most difficult of missions, the completion of his own work. Or again, from the words of Jesus' own prayer, Father, I pray that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. Jesus desires not just to be with us, but to be in us, in the same way that we heard St Paul in the second reading, speaking of the life of God in us through the Spirit. The friendship Jesus offers at this time of pandemic and world crisis is a friendship that reassures, brings comfort and restores to life. It gives a lot it asks a lot, but we know that Jesus is with us. We know too, from that account, of Jesus visiting the home of Martha, Mary and Lazarus. At this time, in our communities, we both find that friendship through others and are able to bring it to the world, ever in the need of the inestimable love of God, the gift of Jesus Christ. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. In dying, Christ destroyed our death. In rising, he restored our life. Let us pray for all who are in need of the new life given by Christ. For the Church, that all who have been baptised into the death and resurrection of Christ may live in the power of his Spirit 
and the peace that is his gift to all who believe in him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who mourn and those recently bereaved, especially the families who have lost a relative to the coronavirus, that they may come to a more sure faith in the resurrection and the hope of a share in it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the beneficiaries of our Lenten almsgiving, the victims of human trafficking and of modern slavery, and all affected by mental health issues, especially the elderly, that they may be enabled to live their lives to the full, without bitterness or rancour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are alone and have become lonely or fearful due to the coronavirus pandemic, that they may know Jesus to be the resurrection and the life through our active concern for and love of them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For health service workers and community carers, that their, that their selfless dedication and commitment to service may be respected, valued and supported, especially at this time of challenge, fear and crisis. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer for those who have died, that they may know the forgiveness of their sins and rise to the glory of the heavenly kingdom in the company of Mary and of all the saints. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In silence we remember those for whom we have promised to pray. Heavenly Father, your Son came to bring life to a world dead in sin. Give us the spirit of repentance that we may rise to a new life in Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Hear us, 
Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man, he wept for Lazarus, his friend, and as eternal God raised him from the tomb, just as, taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Richard Gwynne and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. 
be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and for ever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Everyone who lives and believes in me will not die forever, says the Lord.
let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, through whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. Bless, O Lord, your people, who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that what, at your prompting, they desire, they may receive by your gracious gift, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon us now and forever. Amen.